Hi guys, Pete here, N6QW, and we're uh, being set up to evaluate the Teensy 3.5 uh, SDR rig based on Charlie Morris's design and uh, ZL2 CTM. As I uh, kind of bumble through here and install the power leads, and uh, initially at our initial build, we had some terrible noise issues. Terrible, terrible noise issues. And uh, <clears throat> these uh, noise issues uh, seem to be hardware related. And uh, so what we attempted to do was to uh, resolve the, the noise issues by addressing some of the hardware problems. We got a terrible whine noise. Uh, we got uh, just unacceptable. You couldn't, couldn't connect anything or collect anything from what was being said. So uh, a couple of changes made. First of the codec board over here uh, was bad and we fixed that. Uh, we did some things with regard to putting isolated power supplies in this and that seemed to help but not totally. And uh, then we added an audio isolator and the uh, audio, isol audio isolator on the output uh, was a recommendation from PJRC. It says that sometimes, well, the, the audio circuit is, uh, has to have a separate ground from the, the rest of the circuitry ground. I guess that's inherent in the design, but the isolator did cure some of this up. But the final piece was to install uh, two 600 ohm to 600 ohm uh, modem transformers on the output of the INQ ahead of the Teensy, and uh, yesterday that kind of cured things. So uh, we're, uh, we're delighted that uh, we've got a little better performance. There's still some noise issues uh, that we want to take care of, but uh, I, I, this is so significantly better. So uh, we're going to toot a little bit here. You can hear just how that signal popped right out there. Before you used to get between station, you get a burble and a whine. That's all now gone, and the 600 ohm transformers back here cured that problem. You also used to get a terrible clicking as you would tune the encoder. That clicking sound is gone, and uh, that the only change was the two 600 ohm to 600 ohm. Let's uh. Now, what sounds like atmospheric noise in the background usually would go away when you pull the antenna. That's still somewhat evident, so there's still some opportunity for, for improving things, but uh, I, got, uh, I got some input this morning that there may be uh, some, some code changes that would uh, result in clearing that up. We need, to, we need to run those down, but far... Here we go. But AL7R. Anyway, um, I'm most encouraged by by what I'm hearing here, and uh, 
we're uh, I think we're going to be uh, doing a little further refinement. I do want to look at that one software change that turns off some sort of high pass filter and see if that makes any improvement. But uh, the wine and burble, as we knew it, is uh, is good. I was going to say that signal sounds a little distorted. There you go. Um, I do have my processor on. Turn it off. Turn the processor off. Yeah, don't give me that crap. It doesn't sound good. Okay, I just went ahead and turned the processor off. And uh, I, I might have my gain up a little bit high. I Around, you you don't think that fixed it? I could hear him uh, loud enough to really uh, tell that. I sure he could hear him. Well, that that's a good mark for this receiver. It'll discern some of that stuff. Anyway, N6QW here. This is a Teensy SDR. I think some of that. QSL, QSL, QSL. November 7th, Echo Kilo Delta. And uh, this morning, this morning, uh, not as strong, not as strong, not as strong. Uh, uh, 5 7 5 8. 5 7 5 8. Hotel Alpha 8, Romeo Mike. Hungary. Now we don't hear him. Okay, let's uh, review the board. Uh, as the RF amplifier back here is two J310s, uh, configured as a dual gate MOSFET. My design. RF gain could be adjusted on this stage. Works really well. And 6 QW design. Okay, so from the RF amplifier stage, by the way, um, shortly I'm going to add two relays, one here and one here. Because this is a, a bi-directional board, it can be used for receive as well as transmit. And so, uh, a relay will here, go here and a relay will go there. And it'll be able to, in one direction it'll be received, the other direction will be transmit. And I've used that successfully on the Simple Seaver uh, Plus V20. So uh, that works well. From the, uh, from the RF amplifier stage, it goes into the bandpass filter. I have a little ferrite core splitter here to provide two signals to the ADE1s, which are the, the I and Q detectors. Over here, it uh, takes the input from the uh, Teensy driving the SI5351. At four times the signal, it's a 74AC74, divides the signal by four. I have put two pots on the output here, and uh, they allow me to uh, balance and adjust the signal into the I and Q detectors, which is the ADE1. From there, uh, we just introduced yesterday the uh, two 600-ohm uh, to 600-ohm uh, isolation transformers. And by the way, I know this thing really works well on upper sideband. I had these connections reversed, and so when I first turned it on yesterday after installing these two transformers, uh, I got, uh, I, it was terrible, the, uh, it was all upper sideband, so uh, I, I know this is working really well in, in terms of discriminating between, I, I didn't copy any lower sideband at all, I mean I was not copying the opposite sideband, so uh, the Teensy is really working well there. I got a little audio amplifier here, 2N3904, LM386-3, I've got the uh, little OLED display here 
which is the um, uh, the black and white version. You maybe get a little better look right here. And then uh, over in this direction, I've got the uh, I've got the uh, Teensy board. This is the Teensy 3.5, and then the Kodak board underneath. Uh, I have a little more rewiring to do, but I rewired this board because it was a problem. I did put a ferrite core on the leads coming out of this relay. And this relay here, right here, this little orange device, controls the line-in, line-out. So there are four wires for the line-in, line-out uh, for the I and Q channel. And then I did run uh, a ground. So the ground is continuous off the secondary side, not connected to the board, passed right through, and so the ground goes into the codec. And that's what one of the things I think was the problem with some of the hum before was that we were getting... Uh, we were getting a kind of a common mode problem with uh, ground loops. So this uh, has resolved that. And right now, this is just uh, a cable. I'm going to replace that with uh, some, um, uh, some small uh, insulated cable, or I should say uh, shielded cable. By the way, for shielded cable, I use some uh, uh, cable out of, uh, out of some earbuds that are defunct. And uh, that makes it very, very good. If you're very careful soldering the leads, uh, you can get... Uh, the shielding aspect out of the uh, out of the uh, former cable that went to the earbuds. So anyway, uh, this is uh, much improved. I now have a common battery uh, common battery supply back here in in the corner is a Meanwell a DC to DC converter. It takes nine to eighteen volts in, produces five volts. So that's got a nice clean five volt to it, and it does provide some further isolation to the single twelve volt uh, uh, lead acid cell that's in the back. So this is Pete, N6QW, uh, and I'm kind of uh, pleased with the results here. That's some of the broadcast. In the higher end of 40, it's still early in the morning, it's about 7.30. That's W6RCG, recognize that voice. So there it is. Uh, this is based on Charlie Morris's design, uh, ZL2 CTM, and uh, uh, I, I'm very pleased at uh, how, how we moved along the path. At first, I was pretty disappointed because the noise was such a problem. So there we have it. Uh, this is the first steps of getting the receive part to work. And now we're going to concentrate a little bit well, on the transom. Well, I built that cabin. Uh, the main cabin was built like, I think it was 1926. So, uh, Very nice. Anyway, Pete here, N6QW.